This happened when I was about 16 years old, when I was a sophomore in high school. For context, I'm a female, and this is something that I feel many women have trouble with while in high school. I had recently transferred schools, as my mom and I had moved to another city and wanted a fresh start. Because I was new to the school, I didn't make a lot of friends and was definitely no popular kid. I'd sort of be that one lonely person wandering the halls of the school and mainly ate lunch by myself. I'd like to mention that I have autism and am not social whatsoever. The few friends I did have were the ones I mainly spoke to in class regarding assignments and stuff like that. One day in the middle of February, I was at lunch alone eating by the water fountain as usual. I'm eating my food when this guy approaches me and introduces himself as James. I give him a smile and introduce myself, trying to be polite as I could. He invited me over to his table and told me that he was also new to the school as well and that he was interested in meeting new people. James seemed to be a genuinely nice guy and always kept me interested in the conversations we had. At the end of lunch, we exchange contact info and go to class continuing the day as usual. I'd say our friendship lasted about a week or so before I began to notice things about him that were a bit off. One day, James comes up to me and straight up asks me if I wanted to be his valentine while presenting a box of chocolates. This was a bit strange as we've only known each other for a week. However, I just thought of it as a nice gesture from him and didn't really think much of it. That being said, I was hesitant at first but said yes in the end. I'd say right away, James started acting weird and kept making comments about how much he loves me. He sort of made it sound like we were a thing or something when I made it clear that we definitely weren't. As soon as I put my foot down and told him to stop, his behavior completely changed from genuine and nice to just flat out disrespectful. He would call me names in school and would sometimes make derogatory comments about me when he saw me. I told him that if he was going to continue with this behavior, I didn't want to be around him anymore. He seemed to have gotten the hint as I didn't hear from him for about a week. That was until one night where something happened that nearly shocked me to my core. It happened to be Valentine's Day, and I had been in my room watching a movie when I received a notification from my Snapchat. This was around the time where Snapchat was blowing up, and everyone and their mom had it. I hardly used it, and just assumed it was a simple message from one of my old friends. Upon looking at the snap, however, I noticed that it was from a username I had never seen before. Without hesitation, I opened the snap to see a picture of James looking blankly into the camera with the caption HEY at the bottom. I was confused at first and that's when I noticed the background of the photo had looked awfully familiar. It only took me a good couple of seconds to realize that it was my bathroom wall and that's when I look towards it and see a pair of eyes looking directly at me. I scream at the top of my lungs, causing my mom to wake up and start charging into the bathroom. Why my dad isn't home is another story, but my mom manages to get inside the bathroom but had found no one in there. What she did find though, was the bathroom window wide open and a ladder placed on the other side of the house. This freaked us out tremendously and we called the police to file a report. My mom had stayed by my side just in case he had possibly been hiding in the house somewhere. Eventually, police had arrived after taking a while to find the right house. It took them 25 excruciating minutes to arrive, which still blows my mind. I know time seems to move slow in situations like this, but encountering someone potentially dangerous should require immediate attention. I'm not trying to shame the law in any way but it should have been a top priority in this case. However, there wasn't much they could do other than to keep an eye out for us until we felt we were safe. One of the officers told us that we should probably keep my doors and windows locked. At the time I thought he was just being insensitive, 
but then I remembered that he was just trying to make sure we were safe. At the end of the day, he's probably seen stuff like this a million times. I never saw James again after that, and I had just assumed he had gotten in trouble. It wasn't until my junior year, where I learned that he had actually been in jail for stalking another girl. Turns out, this girl he had stalked had actually put a restraining order against him. However, he ignored that, and so persisted, which ultimately resulted with him in jail. I don't know what his motive was, and I didn't know what he had hoped to achieve with me. But one thing is for sure, is that he was one weird Valentine's Day creep. This happened in the beginning of February of 2019. My name is Corey, and I've spent a lot, and I mean a lot of time for my life trying to find a relationship with someone. The thought of being alone for the rest of your life and nobody to share memories with really turned me away from being single. My friends had always joked about how it was possible I was undateable, which even though it was a joke, still made me depressed in a way. At the time, I had been using a variety of dating apps to try and find a date like Tinder, Match.com, Bumble, etc. I've gotten a few matches here and there, but nobody I could actually persist with in an actual relationship. One day, I had matched with a really cute girl on Tinder that didn't live too far away from me. She claimed to be just a little older than me, was new in college, and while she wasn't a 10 out of 10, she wasn't ugly. Her name was Samantha, and we hit it off well. She had talked about how she had actually moved from a different state and was looking to go to the same college I attended. One day, she had messaged me out of nowhere, inviting me to her Valentine's Day party she was having. This would be my first time meeting Samantha, and I figured a party would be a good place to finally interact with her. The day of the party came around, and I was told to arrive around 7 and just wear casual attire. I wanted to make a good impression, so I dressed up as nicely as I could and put the address into my GPS. The address led me to the more rural side of town. It wasn't necessarily a red flag to me, but Tinder had said she was a lot closer, so I figured that the party was maybe being hosted at her friend's house. I pull up to the address she had gave me, and right away, alarms start going off in my head. The second I see this house, I immediately start to regret coming and to turn back. It was a one-storied home with all of its lights off, and there was only one car in the driveway that looked as if it hadn't been used in years. I texted Samantha if this was her house, to which she said yes and to come through the back. I was hesitant at first, as this area screamed sketch, but then I reminded myself that this is what I wanted. I get out of the car and walk over to the back gate, which had already been open, and as I'm about to turn the corner to the backyard, I hear a voice. However, there was something really off about this voice. It sounded as if a man were trying to imitate a woman's voice, followed by slight giggling. Samantha, is that you? I said. There was no reply. L Look, I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with this anymore, I told her. Whoever was hiding behind the corner of the house started telling me to come back and that I was going to miss the party. However, I knew that it was all a trap and wanted nothing to do with this anymore. As I got back in my car driving out of there, I look over and see two hooded men watching me as I drove off. I removed all dating apps after that and swore to myself that I would never use one again. Maybe staying single isn't all that bad after all.
When I was about 24, I moved out of my parents' house and had just moved into my own apartment building in another city for college. It wasn't the best apartment, but it was definitely affordable and was in walking distance from campus. I didn't own a car, so I would oftentimes have to rely on public transportation to get me places. Whether it was going shopping, going out to eat, or visiting a friend, I'd always take the bus. Last Valentine's Day, my girlfriend calls me and asks for me to come over to her apartment to spend the day together. Given the fact that I haven't seen my girlfriend in over a month due to school, I agreed and took the bus over to her apartment with some flowers and chocolate. We hung out at the pool, watched a movie, and I take her out to dinner late that night as most couples would on Valentine's Day. We eat, pay for our food, and decide to take a midnight stroll around the area to kill some time. As we're walking, we pass by an alleyway, and out of nowhere, this woman frantically comes up to us asking for help. She appeared to be in her mid-forties and wore stained clothing with a scarf on. I told her that we needed to get back home and that we didn't have time. Don't get me wrong, I of course felt sympathy for her, but something about it was just off. My girlfriend, being the nice person she was, said that she'd be happy to help her and if there was anything she needed. She goes on to explain that she really needed milk for her baby and that she couldn't afford to buy more and to please lend $50. Almost immediately, red flags start going up as I began to realize that she was full of it. I might have not been the sharpest guy, but I wasn't stupid. Who asks random people for $50 just for some milk, I thought to myself. I took a good few looks at her and around us and saw no sign of any baby anywhere. And if she really did need milk, why did she ask us for $50? A possibility could have been that she wanted it for extra food, but this area was notorious for people to do drugs as I've seen stuff like this happen before. I tell her that we can go inside a nearby store and get the milk for her, but she then insists to just give her the money and that she'll quote, be on her way. It was at this point however, when I noticed two people hiding behind the dumpster in the alleyway, looking at us. The woman seemed to have caught on to my suspicion, and I told my girlfriend that we had to go while trying to pull her away. I look back at the woman and she's giving us this creepy and unsettling stare I still can't even explain. We thankfully make it back to my girlfriend's apartment, making sure we weren't followed. I told my girlfriend what I had seen and I think she now knows her lesson as to why she shouldn't fall for tricks like that. Till this day, I still wonder what would have happened had whoever was behind those dumpsters come out and chased us. A few weeks later, there was a news report of a small child that had gone missing in the same area. Her body was discovered at a nearby lake by a few fishermen. Authorities say that she had died due to natural causes, but I've always sort of wondered about that. Our city has since named these people as the Valentine's Day Killers.